Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coolum video, another plug side chat. Uh, maybe it's uh, appropriate that there's a, a gas guzzler in the electric vehicle charging stall next to me. Um, but uh, yeah, so the topic I want to talk about today, you know, it might seem a little bit sensational, uh, but I think it's, it's worth talking about, right? And uh, essentially it's a who killed the internal combustion car? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I say that partially joking, but we, we all know that internal combustion engines are on their way out. And I think a lot of electric vehicle advocates um, think that that simply means a transition to all electric, battery electric, right? And I don't necessarily think so. I, I do not think that the end of internal combustion engine vehicles is synonymous with the end of fossil fuel usage. And as a transition, at least in the short term, it might not be a bad thing and uh, or not completely bad, right? Because as a society, you know, we have trillions of dollars uh, invested in um, infrastructure for fossil fuels, we still uh, subsidize fossil fuels to the tune of billions and on a global scale, trillions of dollars a year. Uh, and, and so, so much is built around it. Our economies, everything is built around fossil fuels. So a complete cold turkey cessation of using fossil fuels might not be uh, prudent. And uh, I mean, the big, the big issue is really with the internal combustion engine itself because it is so inefficient that just meeting our transportation needs just moving large bulk cargo around we're we're wasting so much in terms of inefficient conversion of a limited finite uh, resource into a fuel source right so uh and right now i think yeah, if if the world were perfect, a, a hundred percent transition to pure electric, battery electric vehicles, possibly um, hydrogen fuel cell, if it's from uh, cracked water and not cracked natural gas, and, and we could plug up all of the wells and stop adding toxins and pollutants to the environment, just full stop. Yes, that would be ideal. But we don't live in a perfect world, and so we do have to sort of account for this. And I'm, I'm in no way advocating incrementalism. I, I'm just stating what I, I feel is the, the more logical, more reasonable path that I think as a society we're going to end up taking regardless of whether um, any individual supports it, right? And, and so what's going to kill the internal combustion engine car isn't battery electrics it's not um hydrogen fuel cell but i do believe it's a little bit of both it's essentially fuel cell vehicles but not necessarily hydrogen fuel cell so people have already made fuel cells that are very cost effective fairly power dense we can get to that later maybe not as much as they need to be uh, but certainly enough for things like passenger vehicles, uh, heavy-duty uh, transportation vehicles. Uh, and rather than going through the additional hoops of having to build out a hydrogen infrastructure with specialized pressurized tanks, delivery systems, uh, you know, and, and you're just cracking natural gas anyway for a majority of it, rather than going through all of those hoops why not just run those cars off of natural gas or LPG? Uh, and, and these fuel cells, uh, a few different companies are making them now. They range, like I said, in power density, but about 10 kilograms is, is what I've seen quoted. We're about uh, 20 to 25 pounds per kilowatt of uh, power production. Uh, means that, you know, say, say, 200 pounds, which is still less than the weight of the wrecks in, in the uh, um, 
in the I3 will produce about 10 kilowatts. So 400 pounds, which is even for a small passenger vehicle, uh, maybe less than the entire internal combustion engine system, right? Uh, would produce about 20 kilowatts, about the same amount of power that the I3's range extender produces. And, and that's really enough to maintain highway speeds under most conditions, right? Which is why I say this is sort of a fusion. It will involve pairing it with an electric drivetrain and possibly, preferably, be a battery electric, um, something like the I3, something like the Volt, where it can operate as an electric vehicle, maybe with a limited range up to, you know, 50 to 100 miles um, with this additional fuel cell that doesn't necessarily need to run off of hydrogen, but like I said, can run off of natural gas. And realistically, there's a possibility that someone creates some sort of a vaporizer system where those fuel cells could also run off of um, more traditional fossil fuels like petrol or gasoline, right, or, or ethanol. Now, these, these fuel cells are about 80% efficient, which by internal combustion standards is ridiculously high. You know, the average internal combustion engine vehicle is converting at maybe 25% efficiency, uh, anything past about 30% efficiency, it's taking some sort of specialized cycle like what's used in the uh, Prius. And, uh, and that, uh, again, is very high. So 80% represents basically three times higher uh, conversion efficiency. So for the same amount of energy uh, that you're putting in, you're getting about three times the energy out. That means a 15 mile per gallon large SUV or truck would be seeing 45 miles per gallon, uh, pretty close to, to what a Prius would be doing, right? And, uh, and then you look at the actual, again, energy density or energy storage, a one of those five gallon uh, LPG tanks that people use for campers or trailers those store, even with the 20% loss in conversion efficiency, they store as much energy as the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in the top of the line Tesla Model S. And those facilities are everywhere. They don't require specialized pumping systems. You could literally just pull a tank out of a trailer or a camper, plug it into your car, and now all of a sudden you have another 300 miles of range, um, that's, that's actually a very compelling uh, argument for a lot of people who don't necessarily uh, trust electric vehicles or um, solely electric drivetrains. And really in cold environments or during winter, that 20% loss even with fuel cells is still heat loss. So if you're also using that heat loss to heat the cabin, now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're looking at something that for all intents and purposes is about as close to 100% energy efficient conversion that you can get. So, so now all of a sudden you're, you're not only getting your, your 40 miles per gallon in a truck, you're also heating the cabin with no, no additional cost to range. And so I actually think, at least in the midterm, that's what we're going to see. Uh, we're going to see moderate size batteries, probably 20, 20 to 25 kilowatt hours, um, paired with their electric drive trains and paired with range extenders, fuel cell range extenders running off of natural gas or propane or LPG. Uh, you know, with maybe 20 to 25 kilowatts of total power output. And, and that is what I think is going to kill the internal combustion engine. Uh, it, it's that, that, is, that is what will replace it. And really, it's not all, all bad, right? So again, as electric vehicle purists, we might want to see the cold turkey, which would be ideal, but we're still living 
within the constraints of society. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think about this topic. Um, you know, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, as always, uh, thank you for watching.